This video is brought to you by Nebula. Today, the US sends Iranian ammo to Ukraine, Prime Minister Sunak proposes a cigarette ban, and Russia signs a deal with Abkhazia. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Thursday, the 5th of October, 2023. It's been revealed today that the US has sent around 1.1 million bullets seized from Iran last year to Ukraine. While the bullets were seized last year, the US decided to send them over on Monday. This news comes as Ukraine's allies in the West have claimed that they're struggling to keep up with the required rate of production in order to keep Ukraine supplied with ammunition. The US Central Command, or CENTCOM, the agency in charge of operations in the Middle East, have said that the rounds were confiscated from a ship that was headed to Yemen last year. The US government managed to gain ownership of them in July through a process called civil forfeiture. This is where the government can take control of an asset if they think that it's going to be involved in criminal activity. The bullets, specifically, were 7.62mm calibre and used in Soviet-era rifles and light machine guns. Now, on the surface, sending 1.1 million bullets to Ukraine might sound like an impressive feat. However, it's worth remembering that the US has so far sent more than 200 million bullets and grenades to Zelensky's government. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Moving to North Korea, where the government has today halted its nuclear reactor at its main atomic complex. It's believed that the DPRK have done this so that they're able to extract the plutonium by repurposing spent fuel rods. Now, it should be noticed here that this is at least according to a report that cited the South Korean government. According to this report, the 5 megawatt nuclear reactor has actually already been suspended since late September. The South Korean newspaper Donga Ilbo added to this, saying that the possibility of a nuclear test by North Korea is not ruled out. The South Korean Foreign Ministry and Defence Ministry have not yet commented on the report. The fear that this nuclear reactor shutdown is related to weapons manufacture also comes following Kim Jong-un's statement last year that he plans to ramp up the production of nuclear warheads, even going as far as promising an exponential increase. He also passed a law last year which allows the country to preemptively use nuclear warheads. Scientists this week have started reacting to the record-breaking temperatures that have been reported around the world in September. In fact, last month was actually the hottest September on record globally. It was about 0.93 degrees Celsius hotter than the average temperature for the same month between 1991 and 2020. Speaking about this revelation, the director of Copernicus, Carlo Buontempo, said it's just mind-blowing really, and that he's never seen anything like this in any month in our records. September has very much contributed so far to the belief that this year may well be the hottest year ever on record. It's already been about 1.4 degrees Celsius warmer on average than pre-industrial times. Scientists believe that this increased temperature has been caused by both climate change and this year's El Nino weather pattern. In an attempt to make clear why this is so bad for the planet, Federico Otto, a climate scientist for Imperial College London, said, This is not a fancy statistic. It's a death sentence for people and ecosystems. It destroys assets, infrastructure and harvest. In other news, the UK might ban smoking for good. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has announced plans to raise the legal smoking age by one year every year, with the goal of creating a smoke-free generation. The proposed law would mean that anyone currently aged 14 or younger would never legally be allowed to buy cigarettes. The plans aren't guaranteed to happen, though. Sunak has proposed that the legislation be subject to a free vote in Parliament, meaning the Conservative government won't push its MPs to vote a certain way. The Labour Party, however, has indicated that it could support the measure. If the legislation passes, the UK won't actually be the first country to ban smoking for the next generation. In fact, last year, New Zealand passed similar legislation to ban the sale of cigarettes to anyone born on or after January 1, 2009. Back in the UK, Sunak's plans are expected to be met with some resistance, including from his own party. For example, his predecessor as Prime Minister, Liz Truss, last week said the Conservatives should stop banning things. 
Others, including the smokers' rights group Forest, have accused Sunak of attacking the principles of choice and personal responsibility. Meanwhile, England's Chief Medical Officer Chris Whitty, as well as Cancer Research UK, the British Heart Foundation and other health organisations have endorsed the plans. Today, the Russian government has signed a deal for a permanent naval base on the Black Sea coast in the breakaway Georgian region of Abkhazia. This came following a meeting between the leader of Abkhazia, Aslan Bazania, and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Speaking about the meeting, Bazania said, We have signed an agreement, and in the near future, there will be a permanent base of the Russian Navy in the Opchamchira district. This is all aimed at increasing the level of defence capabilities of both Russia and Abkhazia, and this kind of interaction will continue. He added, though, that there are also things I can't talk about. For their part, the Russian government was a lot more tight-lipped about the situation. When asked to comment, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said that the question should be for the defence ministry and that he had no further comment. Back in 2008, Russia recognised Abkhazia and South Ossetia as independent states after Russian troops repelled a Georgian attempt to take South Ossetia. The West, though, have effectively accused Russia of annexing Abkhazia and South Ossetia. In the final uplifting story today, we discuss homosexuality in Mauritius. A decision by the Mauritius Supreme Court has declared that a law outlawing same-sex relations between men is unconstitutional. In the judgment, the Supreme Court justices made clear the rights of homosexual men to non-discrimination by saying, are there any valid reasons for the state to discriminate against the plaintiff having sexual intercourse in the only way available to him? The present case concerns the most private and intimate aspects of the identity of the homosexual men, namely the manner in which they have sexual intercourse. Accordingly, there must exist particularly serious reasons for the state to justifiably interfere with the manner in which homosexual men choose to have consensual sexual intercourse in private. That's all we have time for today, but if you're the kind of person who wants to dive deeper into the more technical and analytical side of these stories, then you ought to check out The Daily Discussion, where our writing team are let loose to discuss stories just like this one, diving deeper into new stories and unpacking the hidden details they found fascinating, but that are either too long or too academic to make it into the final script. If you want to check them out, you can find them exclusively on Nebula. And the best news is that Nebula is less than £2 a month and provides you with ad-free and exclusive videos from TLDR and a ton of incredible content from other creators like Johnny Harris, Real Life Law and Legal Eagle. Check it out by clicking the link in the description and make sure you use our link so they know that you came from us.